Hi, this is Dustin at diesellaptops.com. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important tools in your toolbox. And I'll give you a hint. It's not this. It looks more like this. So the reason I say this is your most important tool in your toolbox is because if you're a technician, no matter what kind of circuit you're working on, no matter what kind of truck you're working on, your multimeter will work on any electrical problem you come across. That's like using your 10 millimeter socket on every bolt on an engine. So a pretty valuable tool, right? So do you need a super duper $500 multimeter? Mm. Well, not necessarily. They are very nice meters, and if you do a lot of advanced electrical diagnostics, then it may very well be worth the money to you. But for the average technician, you don't have to spend nearly that much money to get a good meter. If you watched our first training video, you'll know that when performing diagnostics, we're going to check voltage, amperage, and resistance most often. And you can get a decent meter that will check these for less than $200. I would steer away from the super cheap $10 meters. They can be a little too inaccurate and they lack some of the features that make our lives easier like auto ranging and checking amperage. In this video, we will be using the Bosch MMD 540H. This meter comes in at a great price and has a lot of good features. So now we've got our multimeter, what are we going to check with it? Well, let's start with measuring voltage. So now we have our red lead, which is our positive lead, and our black lead, which is our negative lead. We're going to take the black lead and put it into the negative or calm port on our multimeter. Then you'll have two or three red ports. Two for amperage and the other will be labeled V for voltage. We'll take our red lead and put it into the voltage. So now we have our lead set. We need to set our meter to voltage. V for voltage and we need to determine whether we're using DC or AC voltage to set our meter. Now most everything we check on a truck is going to be DC voltage, but we do rarely use AC voltage when checking certain sensors like ABS sensors and some engine sensors. If you're troubleshooting and there is no mention as to whether you're using AC or DC voltage, then you must assume it's DC voltage. So here we're going to measure battery voltage. Take your red lead, put it to the positive terminal, and take your black lead and put it to the negative terminal. Here you can see we have 12.77 volts. Okay, so now we know how to check voltage with our meter. The next thing we're going to do is measure resistance. We will use resistance checks a lot while diagnosing circuit issues as this is the main way we tell whether a wire is connected or not. Alright, an important note to checking resistance. You always check resistance on an unpowered circuit. So basically if you're checking a component, you should be checking it with no voltage going to it. This usually entails cutting off the key or even unplugging the battery sometimes. This usually will be outlined in the diagnostics that you're following. To check resistance, we leave our leads in the same spot we had when checking voltage. And we have to set our meter to the resistance setting, which is designated by an omega symbol. Now we take the leads and put one on each terminal and we have a resistance, 238 ohms. Now we're going to heat this sensor and watch the resistance change. You can see as the sensor is heated, it has a higher resistance. So the final most common electrical check you will be doing with your meter will be checking amperage. Usually you'll be checking amperage when checking for a draw on the batteries or checking high amperage devices like your alternator or your glow plugs. Now here's where you have to be careful. When checking amperage with a multimeter, we're allowing all of the electricity to flow through our meter. And most meters have a max amperage of around 10 amps. So we must be careful not to allow more than that or we'll blow the internal fuse in the meter and you'll be wondering why you can no longer get a reading. To check amperage, we need to change our leads. So you're going to take the red lead and remove it from the voltage port and install it in the amperage port. And then we need to set our meter to amperage. So here we have a simple headlight circuit with a breaker, a switch, and a headlight. And now we want to check amperage draw of the headlight. The first thing we need to do is remove the positive wire go into the headlight.
And now we're going to put our meter in line with the switch and the bulb. And we turn the switch on and you can see our amperage measurement. You can see we're drawing 4.6 amps on the headlight. So that's all fine and good when we're checking low amperage, but what about when we want to check an alternator or a starter? A starter on a bigger diesel engine can draw upwards of 600 amps, so we definitely can't use the internal meter fuse for that. So we have to get an external tool called an amp clamp. We will be using the OTC 3501. This tool allows us to check high amperage circuits without damaging our multimeter. But be careful here, as even though we're checking amperage, we're actually measuring voltage from the amp clamp. What happens here is the amp clamp measures the amperage and then converts this into a voltage and outputs this signal in millivolts. So we need to set our meter to read voltage for it to read correctly. Now with our amp clamp plugged into our meter, we're ready to read amperage. So now that we have our meter set and our amp clamp ready, the only thing you have to do is make sure you zero the amp clamp before using it. You'll see we're, right here we're reading 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millivolts. Now if we press the zero button, now we're reading zero. Now to check your amperage, you basically put the amp clamp around the wire and engage your load. Here you can see we're reading 280 amps. Okay, so now we know the basics of our multimeter. There are a lot of extra features that you can learn as you go, but for now you have the knowledge to start diagnosing and checking most electrical circuits. If you're interested in buying any of the tools we used here today, you can get them on our website at diesellaptops.com under the Shop Tools tab. Stay tuned for more videos to get more in-depth troubleshooting tips and tricks. Mm -hmm.